This weekend, we celebrate one of the most popular saints in the history of the church and beyond, Francis of Assisi. He is represented twice here in the cathedral, both in the chapel of St. Anthony, as well as in this chapel, dedicated especially to him. And while this Saturday, October the 3rd, is the anniversary of his death in 1226, his feast is formally observed tomorrow on Sunday, October the 4th. Francis was born in the Umbrian city of Assisi in 1182. When he was about 20, he went off to war against the city-state of Perugia. Captured, he spent a year in prison before being ransomed. Subsequently, he developed a serious illness from which recovery was slow. And these experiences provoked a spiritual crisis leading to dramatic episodes in the remainder of his life. Initially, it began with an encounter with a leper. And from then on, his life began to take shape around an utterly new agenda. It became one of prayer, care for the poor, and a life as a penitent hermit. One day, while praying before a crucifix in the dilapidated chapel of San Damiano, he heard a voice speak to him. Francis, repair my church, which has fallen into disrepair, as you can see. Only after setting about to physically restore the ruined building, did he understand his vocation was to recall the whole church to the radical simplicity of the gospel, the spirit of poverty, and the image of Christ in the poor. Films about Francis, and there are several, I particularly like the one by Zapparelli. These focus on the scene where he divested himself of his clothes and was transformed from rich boy to one serving the sick, working with his hands and bearing witness to the gospel. Gradually, the spectacle held a subversive appeal. He began to preach publicly and to attract followers. Soon, a dozen other young men joined him as the nucleus of his new order. They assumed the name Friars Minor, indicating they were lesser brothers. In time, Claire and other young women followed, mocking them likewise for a life of poverty and consecration to Christ. Despite warnings in the Vatican, the simple rule of Francis with emphasis on poverty uh, was impractical. And yet, nonetheless, Pope Innocent III in the year 1210 approved the little community. Francis also became a deacon about this time, but out of humility and a high regard for the priesthood, did not proceed to the next step of ordination. He and his friars took up residence at the rural chapel of the Poroncola in Assisi. And this became the base from which they spread out in small groups through central Italy, doing manual labor and preaching, and then beyond. Although Francis left relatively few writings, the life of Francis was the embodiment of his message. It reflected the joy and freedom that became hallmarks of his spirituality. 
He taught that the folly of the cross was unmerited suffering borne patiently for the love of Christ, and this was the path to perfect joy. Likewise, he inspired a preferential option for the poor. Centuries before, the expression became current in the church. In an age of crusades and other sacred violence, Francis espoused a radical commitment to nonviolence. He saw violence as an offense against the gospel commandment to love and a desecration of God's image in all human beings. This even brought him to Egypt and the Holy Land. And there he was appalled by the behavior of the crusaders themselves. He even managed to meet with the Sultan of Egypt, al Kamil, but was unsuccessful in an effort to end the warfare and to convert him. Subsequently, Francis spent the Christmas of 1223 in Greccio, where he invented the Christmas crib. Pope Francis, in his encyclical Laudato Si, recognizes the vivid sense Francis had of the sacramentality of creation. For the love of nature, all things, living or inanimate, reflected their creator's love, and with us, do reverence and wonder rather than destruction and exploitation. In this spirit, St. Francis composed his famous Canticle of Creation, beautifully spelled out here in the Cathedral's Chapel of St. Anthony. Robert Ellsberg comments, quote, altogether his life and his relationship with the world, including animals, the elements, the poor and thick, as well as princes and prelates, women and men, represented the breakthrough of a new model of human and cosmic community." Unquote. Francis' identification with the crucified Christ was so intense that in 1224, while praying on a retreat, he received the first recorded case of the stigmata. The physical marks of Christ's passion on his hands and feet. He became ill and then blind. His last years were thus marked by excruciating physical suffering and spiritual happiness. Welcome, sister death, he exclaimed at last. The decision of our Holy Father to accept the name of this saint upon his election is the most notable recent recognition of the import of this saint, not only to Catholics, but to the world as a whole. By choosing his name, Pope Francis hoped to follow in the footsteps of the good saint, with his message of respect for creation, peace among men and women, concern for the poor and those in the periphery, and appreciation of the value of sharing in Christ's suffering among us. St. Francis is the patron of several orders and religious and shares his name with cities like San Francisco and many parish churches, as here in the Archdiocese. However, the acclaimed prayer of St. Francis, you know, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, is a modern compilation with no direct connection to Francis himself although it fits him perfectly. Francis died at the age of 45 at the Puerto Rico on October the 3rd, 1226. He was canonized two years later by Pope Gregory the Ninth, who also would canonize St. Dominic. Both the Franciscans and Dominicans, unlike the older order of monks, were directly involved in the life of the world and the church and dedicated to their renewal and reform. Although the popularity of Francis was widespread from early on, 
It experienced a remarkable revival in the 20th century among non-believers as well as Christians. Pope Francis recognizes this in his new encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, just released this Saturday. Francis is the patron saint of Italy and also of the environment. St. Francis, pray for us, inspiring us in these turbulent times to bring love where there is hatred and hope where there is despair.